So today I'm going to break down my investment income and I'm going to show the difference between what investment income means and what potential drawdown means. There are two different concepts, but I'm going to make it abundantly clear of how simple these concepts are. So when you talk about investing your money, oftentimes people say, well, I want that money right now or how do I live off my passive income? And so I wanna break these concepts down and make it super simple for you of how you take that money that you've invested and have actually get it back in your pocket. So there's a few ways. And then I'm gonna break down kind of what my investment income is during this talk. And so you understand and conceptualize exactly how this works, okay? So when I invest into an asset, I invest in, let's say a business, I invest into a real estate property, I invest into the stock market. I am earning income from those different asset classes. Now, that is not the same as stacking a ton of income or a ton of investment dollars up and saying I have X number of dollars in this investment account. Those are two different concepts and here's why. So when I talk about dividends in particular from stocks, so there's three asset classes, right? We have stocks, we have real estate, we have business. Number one is stocks. So when I go invest in stocks per se, and when I say stocks, it's pretty general, right? But let's say my index funds, my ETFs I talk about all the time, or my individual holding, for example, I own a specific company, let's call it, right? Those companies in the index, the group of stocks or the individual stock, are going to typically, but not always, pay me a dividend. So maybe an up and coming growth company that hasn't really matured might not pay a dividend or an investment income piece of the puzzle, right? So they might just pay, you know, they might not pay a dividend, they're reinvesting all their profits. Every time they earn, they're reinvesting into the business. They're seeing the bigger picture long-term, but eventually a company like Apple becomes a little bit more mature. Meta becomes a little more mature. They're no longer really that growth up and coming opportunity. They've really matured into a really big, awesome company. And therefore what they do is pay back their shareholders for those that own their stock. And so this is where the income comes from, the investment income comes from. So when I own an Apple stock, I own an individual stock or I own an index, let's call it a VTSAX. I own that investment and that investment produces some sort of a dividend. Now, typically dividends aren't that large as a dividend yield. So maybe a dividend yield might be one to 2% generally speaking. So if you have like a 4% dividend yield, that's considered a very high yield, super high. And so maybe you own something like VYM, which which is an ETF for high dividend yield. And so depending on what your goals are, my goal is total appreciation or total growth, which is appreciation, the increase in the asset value plus the dividend growth. And so I'm looking at all of that, but some people really want just dividend growth. And that's typically on the older side of things or more the mature side of things as you're retiring. But there's a lot of push in the younger generation to have a high dividend payout. Now, let me explain the differences to why you don't really necessarily want to push for that. When you look at the total return of the stock market, let's say it's 10%. You're looking at dividends and capital appreciation. So the growth of the value of the asset that you own plus the dividend payout. And the total is that 10% we always refer to. So you want the total, you want the big picture, and you're not concerned necessarily about the dividends here and now. Now you will get paid dividends, but you shouldn't heavyweight your portfolio to be highly dividend. And obviously there's speculation and there's conversation around that argument. But again, that's not the point of this video today. So when I own my ETFs and my index funds, I'm getting paid a dividend based on the, you know, the, the makeup or the yield of that specific investment product. And that's considered my income from that investment. Now, if I own $1 million or $2 million in that investment, specifically in the stock market, I am able to withdraw more than just the dividend that's paying me every single year. So if I decided the difference, you know, between the investment income and the actual drawdown, when I say financial freedom, I know if I pull 4% of that total value of that stock market investment, I can live off that for the rest of my life. That would be the drawdown. That would be the financial freedom aspect. However, regardless if I do that or not, I actually get paid a dividend, which is actually a cash payment to my investment account. And the key is to reinvest that. And so the difference, and I'll put it on the screen, if you reinvest versus you don't reinvest is substantial. The example on the screen is $10,000 invested 
in 1960 for a long period of time, let's call it 60 plus years. If you reinvested the dividends, you end up with like four or two point something million dollars, as you see on the screen. If you don't reinvest dividends, it ends up being like 400,000. The difference is staggering, obviously, but this is why you reinvest your dividends. So when somebody tells you a lie to take out your dividends and earn your earning passive income to pay your light bill, that is a silly take and that you see that on TikTok, but don't, don't do that. However, it is, I'm still getting paid my dividends, but at the same time, I'm reinvesting all those and I'm not taking or pulling those from that account. And that's the difference between my income on the stock market versus my potential drawdown, which would be the financial freedom aspect of it. In for 2024, we were paid about $30,000 in dividends to give you guys, you know, an idea of where we were at. Now that's invested close to, you know, 1.5 to 1.8, I think at the time when throughout 2024, but that's gonna be well over 2 million in 2025. So therefore that's not a huge cash payout in, you know, as a representation of how much we have invested. However, that's why the financial freedom aspect of this is so big because we can withdraw, not only th we could have $30,000 in income, but on top of that, we could withdraw, well, in conjunction with that, we could withdraw 4% of that total balance. And so our investment income from dividends alone in the stock market is about 30,000 at this current point in time. That's only going to grow with time and compound interest. And so that's the difference between the two. Now, the second piece of this is the real estate that we own. So I call this mailbox money and it's not really mailbox money anymore because it's actually just a direct wire, but we own real estate syndications. So we own these big multifamily properties all over the United States, actually primarily Texas, and we have three in particular. And so we aren't sole owners of this. These are syndications similar like an index fund, like you and I could go onto this property Let's say it's a you know hundred million dollar property. There will be an operator that goes to purchase this property and then buy and gets a bunch of investor money. And I just put passively, truly passively, money into that property. This is one of my best and most fun investments I have because the reason I like this so much is because I'm totally passive. I don't really like real estate, but I love the benefits of real estate. And so having the benefits of real estate without actually dealing with the toilets and tenants is a huge benefit. And so real estate syndications are phenomenal. So we have three specific properties. We have one in Dallas, we have one in Arlington, and we have one in Houston, all in the Texas area. And so we just got our first payout from our Dallas location. We put $50,000 into this location. We got paid out on a quarterly basis, mailbox money of $1,250 per quarter. Now you don't make your money on the quarterly mailbox money. Like it's a great payout. We get paid about $5,000 for that property. It's a good payout, don't get me wrong, but that's not where we're gonna get wealthy. The point of the real estate syndication is on the three to five year hold, and on the end of it, they go ahead and sell that property. And that big cash payout is where you make your big money. That's where you 2X your money and stuff like that. And all in between the cash, you know, let's call it the mailbox money and the big sell at the end is where you get your money. Now, we have one in Dallas, which is about $5,000 per year. We have one in Arlington, which is about similar, about $5,000 a year but we also have one in Houston where we put more money in. So therefore we get bigger payouts and we get paid about $10,000 a year from there. So all of these are cash payments and all of these are about $20,000 a year is what we're getting paid at the current moment. We will be stacking these with time. So these will be adding to our portfolio with time, but right now we're making about $20,000 a year. So between our dividends with our investment income of $30,000 and between our investment income of our properties, we're making about $50,000 a year. Now I'm not gonna go into the breakdown of how depreciation of the real estate kind of wipes that income out, but it does. And it's very, very important to understand how that works. Now that is the dividends portion of the investment income breakdown, the equity or the real estate piece of the mailbox money. Now, the other piece is our business interest. So I talk about often how we have private equity interest. And so we have two private equity plays that we have in place right this second. So we have a connection to different, you know, private companies. And because we have that connection, because we have the access, which I talk about a lot, getting access to this. And all my Budget Dog Academy students will have access to this specifically because I have access to it. So anything I'm talking about, all of my Budget Dog Academy students have access to these deals, which is a reason why you pay for access. So with this equity payout, we don't necessarily have any cash payouts throughout the years. So this is a long-term type of play. They might get sold 
they might get bought, they might decide to cash out to their investors, whatever the case is, the business could choose a lot of different directions. But because we have an equity interest in these companies, depending on the move they make, we will get paid as a result and it's going to be a large payout, especially with private equity, because typically what happens is you buy them at a, the valuation is very low. They increase their profits through, you know, uh, investment money that you know you invest into the business and they make a huge substantial gain down the road and that's kind of the goal private equity versus public markets given like my stock interests like i talked about that's more public markets versus private equity private equity has a very good track record there is a lot of risk of course with it but based on a lot of data private equity outperforms public markets as a whole by about five percent over the last 20 years and so if you actually take that number and move it out towards a bigger portion of time, a $1 million investment over the, these periods would turn into close to $172 million with private equity based on the return of 14%. And with public markets, it's about 9% over that same time period. So if you extract that over that time period, it would be about 26 million. So that difference of like 172 minus 26 million is the difference of that a million dollar investment. And this is why private equity is so intriguing. But I will say private equity is not at play until you've already eclipsed everything we talk about within Budget Dog Academy. You have your eight steps complete. You've read the Roadmap to Financial Freedom, our national bestseller. Everything's in order. You have your foundation down and then the next step is private equity potential. And this is why my students have the supreme advantage because they can move faster than the average person because they have access to deals that the average public does not have access to. And so of course there's always risk with everything, but that's a breakdown of our dividends, which are our investment income with stock, our mailbox money with our real estate properties, and then also potentially our equity payouts with our business interest long-term. So technically speaking all in, we have about $50,000 a year. Technically we are earning from our investments like actual income going into our investment accounts. So we could use this, but we do not. We reinvest everything. So are all of our dividends we receive, those are reinvested like I talked about and all of the mailbox money, we roll those into new properties with time. And so all of that stuff will be reinvested. This is a long-term play. And so you might be asking, well, how do you make money right now? Theoretically, we don't need to make money. And that's the beautiful thing of financial freedom is when you get to the point of financial freedom and you can withdraw your money for the rest of your life and you don't have to work because your principal is so large, you're good to go. And that's the beautiful thing of this. However, we do earn money from our own business. And so therefore we have an own, our own business. We do earn money, but it's not needed. So anything is just a cherry on the top. And that's the cool thing to be in a spot like this, because now I can actually make impact and not worry about a dollar and I can focus on the right things and why I talk about financial freedom so much. If you guys want to learn about the three levels of financial freedom and the process that we went through throughout this time, you guys absolutely can. And go ahead and look in the top right corner of the video. And I will put a video up there for you guys to watch the three levels of financial freedom. And I hope this helps to really break our investment income down, but also explain the difference between what we actually take and earn and use versus reinvesting. And reinvesting is the way to go. And so you got to be really careful with that and understand that concept entirely. And I hope this helps. And I will see you guys next Monday.